Don't make me laugh. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are live. It is about two o'clock. You know, you guys, it's uh, midday with Tara. I know it's one o'clock, but I told you guys I was coming on live today to um, talk about life, lives, love, and relationships. One of the, the dynamic speakers for the event, February the 8th, is Dr. Michael Mitchell, and I have him here live wow. to Hello. talk about it today. So Dr. Mitchell, talk to me a little bit and share with uh, my Facebook Live audience what would you be sharing that day to our married couple? Well, we would talk about marriage, the, the, first the seriousness of marriage, and then the obstacles that you can expect to face, but then I'll give you some tools on how to handle it. You know, when you talk about marriage, there's like six major things that can always be flowing, always there. If you get those down, have plans of action for those. Like, first of all, commitment. You know, it starts with a very serious commitment. You know, when two people come together, it just shouldn't be, let's go try this, but rather <laughs> we're committed towards. And so right. you gotta commit to the person, you gotta commit to principles. And then I like for people if they don't have a family plan or a family constitution, I'll talk to you about how to get one. Wow. Our nation function all of these 200 some years now, not because of what we do every day, but what was done in the beginning. Mm. They set down a, a constitution and they set down rules. And so notice every time something come up, we want to reflect back to the, to the Constitution. Right. All right. And so families can actually have Constitution. Like our family, this is what we believe we are here to do mm -hmm. collectively. Of course, different individuals are in the marriage, but each one are coming together for a purpose. So we find that purpose. Here's what we want to do. But then, like, we, you put amendments to it because things change. <laughs> we, <don't, laughs> oh, we, we live, so we it's dynamic. Y'all know so how I do it. <laughs> we're going to make it because here's what we believe it's, we're going to do. And then you put like preambles and you put uh, tidbits with the Constitution. We won't do this. We will not engage in these things. We will not allow ourselves to go there. And by always having those, when we run into a problem, we reflect back. Now, okay, once you've been married, I've been married now 33 years, all right? Wow. And so as you That's go through- That's unheard of yeah, this day you, and time. Yeah, it has been 33 <laughs> years of good. But I think what has helped us, we had from the very beginning, we had a family plan, we had our vision assignment, we believe what God called our family to do. Mm -hmm. And even when, before we had kids, and then as kids came, we put in how we're gonna raise our kids before they were even born. Wow. But then, as they come along, they have different personality, they have different goals themselves, so you have to adjust that. So and you so, had a vision for your family, yeah. for your marriage. Yeah, and that's what you do. Yeah. And that we you help people to do, because sometimes people just get married yeah. and just go with the flow, but wait, wait, okay, you got married. Now it's two become one. Mm -hmm. And so now as this one, what do we believe we are supposed to do with our lives together? Wow. That's not eradicating what the spouse may, the wife may say, I'm supposed to do this. My husband may say, I'm supposed to do that. That doesn't go away, mm -hmm. but it's part of it. We are helping each other become, fulfilling our own natural purpose, but then our family got a purpose, and we're building around that family purpose. So mm -hmm. we got the commitment to that. Then to make anything work, communication. My yeah. God, you can't do nothing without <laughs> communication. So we're going to talk about communication because that's critical. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get there, we get hung up there because it's, it's so dynamic, but we're gonna talk to you about how to communicate, not just how do we talk, but how do we express what we're really feeling. Yes. Because sometimes people talk, but they're not telling you the truth. And so uh, we talk about that and how to make sure everybody get a chance to communicate. Because okay. sometimes in relationship, it's just one-sided. Mm -hmm. You got a dominant personality or one person more quieter than the other, so they wow. never really say nothing. But in marriage, you gotta speak up because stuff is going on all the time and you can't leave room for assumption. Assumption mm. is the lowest form of learning. And so sometimes, you know, a spouse may go, okay, you should know what I want. Yes. But <laughs> we I don't. We call that distorted thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> distorted thinking. Distorted thinking, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want, so if you would tell me, you know, we don't have to start trying to surprise each other. Right. Uh, we can surprise in that the package I put it in, but are you better you tell me what you want for your birthday? Better to tell me what you like. If you don't like flowers, don't have me bringing these flowers here <laughs> and you saying that, but really you don't like it. So right. let's go and say, I really don't like flowers, I like candy. So going forward, we're gonna hang with a lot of candy. <laughs> you know, if I put flowers, that's just gonna be a little something, something right. extra because we're communicating. Uh, uh, men have to know, women talk naturally. Now this could be different on occasion, but for the most part, women talk twice as much as men. Yes, we do. And so <laughs> we have to look at what does my spouse do? You know, if, if she go to work, that means it's possible unless she's talking a lot at work, she's waiting to get home to talk to me. If she's mm -hmm. at home, 
she'd been talking to little babies and stuff, where she, that was an adult conversation. <laughs> and so she's going to be wanting to talk to me. I come home tired. I just want to sit in front of the TV and watch the game. But I got to fear her. Like, I got to set aside right. some time just to let her get her talking in. Mm -hmm. And so she can be fulfilled. So we'll talk about that. And then if time allows, go ahead. Y'all better come. Let me tell you something. <laughs> This is going to be off the chain. <laughs> We're going to have an excited time. Oh, Dr. Mitchell, right. you are really throwing out some good key elements that most people never know until divo after, after the divorce. divorce yeah. They find this out after they get divorced no. that this is the things that we should have implemented in our marriage. Yeah, because, you know, marriage gets harder as you do it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. But for some people, the second or third time works. You know why? Because they finally mm -hmm. learned the lessons yeah. that they didn't listen to somebody in the first one. So better than, than divorce and then be better with the next person, why don't we talk and get better with it? Cause it's, it's, and it's not like I've been married 33 years. We still have to keep talking. That's right. Because they ain't changed. See, what nobody tell you up front that you're going to change <laughs> naturally. You know, the life changes our bodies, our life changes our perspective. And so you got to make those changes with someone else. Mm -hmm. See, nobody tells guys that your wife will go through dynamics in life. Women be knowing these things because they've been in the corner talking all the while. <laughs> yes. They've been talking since they were little girls. Yes. See, men, <laughs> we don't have a coming out party at 12 or 13, all right, and then a clothing down party in our 40s. All right. But women been knowing these things. And right. so men get caught off guard. So there may be some men there at, at an age or their wife is at an age that you really need to talk about those dynamics that's going to happen. Those hot flashes. Yeah, yeah. That, that changes. <laughs> yes. And it changes everything. It does. But the way you get through it is communication. It Boy, you communicate, you get through everything. And then you life gets better because I made the adjustment mm -hmm. with my spouse at where they are now. It's, it's Psalms 103, and when they talk about bless the Lord, oh my soul, and mm -hmm. all that's within me, I'm blessed, holy name. But then the next verse, verse two said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And one of the benefits is that he blessed me at my current age and in my current condition. Mm. And so that's what we want to understand that you may be in your 30s marriage, in your 40s marriage, in your 50 or older marriage, where in the current conditions, you need to know God's blessing at that stage mm -hmm. and the dynamics or because see one of the things we'll have to talk about, gotta talk about sex. Well. Okay. <laughs> well <laughs> it's, 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 That's it's, right. I'm telling you. That's a major sex part of was your marriage. By God. The Bible says marriage is honorable and all and the bed is undefiled. Right. But you gotta talk about that bed. It says it's undefiled, but then you can't make them and you can't rape them. And so you, Say know, that again. you know, you can't that make again. them, and you can't break <laughs> okay. them. So a lot of times people bring to the bedroom things in their head, but they don't communicate it to their spouse. Mm -hmm. They just start doing stuff. And so you, you could get rebelled on that or mm -hmm. repelled. And so if so, you'd be like, well, she don't want to, wait, wait, wait. You need to communicate that because you may be trying to try something that you picked up somewhere in your past <laughs> that your spouse may not even know nothing about that. Right. And communication, you know, basically if you, you, if you rap strong enough and you, <laughs> if you're able to persuade her, but think about it, if they're not ready to go where you're trying to go, don't make them and don't rape them. Right. Right. But communicate with them. So that's why communication is so important yeah. because these are things God gives. It's such a blessing to have them there. But, it, you know, your life change, your career change, and the dy dynamics of that. See, when you first get married, y'all may be smoking that every day, every other day. <laughs> but, when you're young, yeah, but I was as, married. <laughs> when you mature <laughs> and life goes on and things change, uh, it's better to plan those things. Mm -hmm. And then to plan it at a place where it's agreeable to all parties. And so you get those things down. And then the moolah. You know, those papers, <laughs> right. those cabbages, money. Money is a big part of making or breaking a marriage. Yes. His finance is really big. And people approach marriage. We do a lot of marriage counsel, free marriage counsel mm -hmm. and marriage counsel. And I find the money management part is going to either make or break that marriage. Wow. Uh, because some people want to keep all the money to themselves. They're my money, your money. Those will be at my bills. And then so one person hit a dynamic, so you ain't even pay your bills. I'm able wow. to pay my bills and not realizing when it comes to marriage, all that money is our money. Mm. Wow. It, re it really right. is our money. Now, right. you know, I'm not coming there to tell them how to manage their money, but I am there to suggest some tools that may work well if you consider them. 
because at the bottom line, if I marry a lady, so I'm already married, so I can't remarry, but if I marry somebody today, if you just, just get married, mm -hmm. if that person got $40,000 worth of debt, the day I say I do, I just uh, inherited $40,000 worth of debt. I can say that's their debt all I want to, but that's our debt. And so I think it's important that everybody knows. So the, the male, according to God, is responsible for everything. And that's the thing men have to know. When you, you want to be the head, well, that word doesn't mean responsibility. So you're responsible for washing the clothes, washing the dishes, feeding the family, cooking the food, getting the groceries, keeping, cleaning the cars, filling them up. You're responsible for everything. But then God give you a help meet, somebody suitable for you to help you. And that's when you begin to value your wife. Like, okay. thank you for helping me <laughs> with these kids. Because I'm still responsible. Helping me with the grass. I'm still helping me with the food. Yes. And then you begin to value that help. And so we want to talk about all these things. And so if she's helping you with bills, thank God, because, man, you're responsible for paying all of those bills. I don't want to mess about it up here with Facebook Live. Well, listen, I see. Y'all know I can't see that far. Yeah. And okay. I see whatever y'all type, and I'll have to answer those questions later. But I know it's hot because you know I don't have my glasses yeah. on. I can't see that far. But, it's gonna but be it sounds dynamic. like yeah. we, just need a, we just need to have you there just by, uh, just for marriage. Yeah, that, we may have to be I'm sitting up here like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah because you know it's so America. it's so critical because in this day and time with especially in the church the divorce rate is like 70 percent yeah, now think about that 70 yeah. percent and it shouldn't be that way yeah. all because we don't have information right. it, nobody's so talking about it. right and that's what got me just like when we reached dynamics in our marriage we reached places that nobody talked about. And I, kept, I was laughing with my wife when I said, my daddy hinted at certain things. What, you know, he would use his, his foreign right. language. Like, <laughs> what the heck? I didn't mean to this. But he didn't say why he made that statement. Right. right? So, oh, Vita just told me. Right. Then, I, you know, when you got to this place, because so I'm telling you, when women with the change, their, their emotions, oh, yeah. their hormones, they don't even know where to go. That's they right. have changed and they don't even know they're changing. And so you have to be ready for that. But I find that I, what we're doing now, we, we prepare men for that. So like, because in that moment, just what I think a lot of people at that place, they've been married 20 years, 25, mm -hmm. and they just woo away from each other. Yes. But if you walk with them through that, so if somebody can let you know this is going to have an impossible, these things. So if this stuffed up coming out of their mouth, don't take that personal. personal. Yes. This is the person who... Hormones are here. The Crazy. doctors don't even know how really to balance <laughs> right. them. Oh, so a lot of them, they're going to throw extra estrogen at them, and, and that may swing to the other side. And then for men, their changes happen quietly, mm -hmm. right? You may not even realize you are changing right. because men don't check up on themselves that much. But your testosterone level could shift on you. You not know yes. it. Uh, uh, soy is a big part of all of our food products. Yes. But soy introduces estrogen to men and therefore throw their hormones off and they don't even know it. And so we got to talk about those kinds of things. And of course, uh, I just, those six areas I like to talk yeah. how to manage money, sexual interaction, communication effectively, and then distribution of duties. Okay. Uh, who's going to do what in the marriage, mm. uh, in the house? You know, like early on, I may have been the one doing more of the outside work and my wife did more of the inside work. but. You know, like for me, I never liked washing dishes. All them very good at it. <laughs> I'm very good at washing dishes. We wash the dishes. We clean the house. We wash the refrigerator stove every time. Mm -hmm. But I grew up where we shared it. My sister and I, we okay. shared. We, you know, I lived with my grandmother, so at one point the uncles were there. But then they all graduated. <laughs> and that whole duty fell on me. And so it was every day. That's when I started mm -hmm. hating it. And I didn't still didn't mind doing it, but we were out of town. He said, you go out of town, you're playing basketball, you have a game out of town, you get back at 10 at night. The dishes are still it. waiting on you. <laughs> and I still remember one night they hit an impasse. When it's like, all these brown frogs <laughs> living here, they're not the dishes for me. Then I hear this boy say, you don't wash those dishes, you ain't standing here. You had to wash I jumped dishes. out the window. No, I jumped out the window <laughs> no. and slept in the car that night. <laughs> Because I didn't disobey. Because it's like, okay. you don't watch this, you just can't stay here. So I did disobey. I did stay in there. I slept in I the car. I hope it was summertime. It was like spring. It wasn't bad. Okay. I had a quill. It was, you know. But yeah, I slept in the car and got up. They went to work. They left my breakfast. And I got up when they breakfast, went to school. I ran home before school was over. Got them dishes washed up. Okay. But it was like, I still remember that. So I told my wife, up oh, I just really wouldn't want to wash dishes. But although sometimes I still do it, but 
So you have to talk. Right. That's that better communication. Right. And so you, early on stuff she was doing, now I do understand things I was doing. When it comes to your taste change, right. your life's change. So you just, just keep talking about who's going to do what. Right. But don't lock nobody into a role. Mm. That's a woman's work. That's a man's work. Because, like for me, I can cook, but I don't do it much. Yeah. But I got some brothers that that's what they do, and that's they love right. to do it. And in their homes, they do most of the cooking their wives don't do. So you have to talk about who's going to do what in our house, mm -hmm. your house I'm talking about, and then work that out. And so depending on who's there, there it's going to be you that's there. And what are you needing and what you pull out, mm -hmm. that's what's going to be released. But we wow. at least want to cover those six things because those are six critical areas. If you can manage those, what I didn't say is anger. Mm. Managing your anger, you're gonna get mad, you know. But the Bible says, get mad, but don't go to bed yeah, with man, it. Switch right. me, don't hold it too long. Right. Manage that stuff so we got we got to talk, and we'll talk probably about family meetings, the business meetings that family need to have often. Mm -hmm. Who let's sit down and talk. So, some of this because you can't talk about everything all the time, Not right? Otherwise, you're gonna hate to see your spouse. They're like, oh, here she comes. Here, <laughs> you don't want to be your spouse, see you and go. Oh. They're rolling right. their head because every time I see her, she talking about every time I see him, here he go again. Mm -hmm. You got to hold those things for the family meeting. Okay. Just like at a job, that's the stuff I need to talk to the boss about. We'll talk about it at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so when my time comes to talk at the meeting, I'm going to bring them up. Right. But up to that point, I'm just going to hold those. And there's some things you need to hold. You don't need to bring up to your spouse everything that come up. Hold some of those things until you all can get together and talk about that. So you can always just have fun and just let stuff go. Like, we argued, we forgave, and that's it, that's it, let's go to lunch. And you're being able to do that, too. They're like, yeah. okay, that's it, that's over, we just talked about, it. let's go to lunch, let's go eat. And, and being able to roll to like that with somebody's like, yeah. how could you be that mad? And then it's all, because I let it go, <laughs> that's it. That's done, yeah. under the bridge, roll on. Right. That's how you have to do it. So we're going to talk. Uh, this is going to be great, yeah, it's gonna guys. Be great. And plus, you're going to have the other speaker yes. there. We're, we're going to be talking about singles. So we're we'll be able to roll all that. We're going to roll some love. <laughs> Look, we may have to, hey, this is going to be awesome. I, now, y'all know I can't see, so I'm going to ask the <laughs> questions in a minute because y'all keep popping stuff up there, and I don't have my glasses nor my fan today. But I want you guys to come out because this is just the information you're giving, not just for married couples, for singles that's thinking about marriage. Yeah, yeah. this is important. If you yes. can have two ahead of time and make the right choice before you jump, mm -hmm. it's really, it really yeah. will help. Yeah. yeah. So it, y'all, you guys that are listening, I mean, this is Dr. Michael Mentor. He is going to be talking to the married couple and the singles and the wannabes and the children. This is information. Look, he need to write a book. <laughs> Tell me about Sally again. He, he, he need to write, to write a book. <laughs> So yeah. this information really needs to be out because this will this is a this is a game changer for a lot of people. Like I said, so many people get this information on the flip side after they're divorced or they're on marriage number three yeah. and they've learned this lesson when they can just get it right the first right, time. Right. In fact, it's best to if you can get a single, that would be great. Yes. And to think about single and the choice I need to make. How do I make that choice? What do I look for in a person? And do how do I prepare myself to be something they will want to? Yeah. See, a lot of people point at yes. what I want you to be and not dealing with what you, you need want. to be. Right. And you I know, say so that all I was time. single a, a good long time before I got married, so I got out a good while to prep for that. Mm -hmm. But in that, I learned a lot of lessons. And because of what I do, I had to prepare for ministry. So that helped me prepare for marriage, even though I wasn't married. But by the time I got married, I had a lot of tools already in my tool bag. All right. And it has really helped. Well, thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for coming on live with me today on Facebook and just sharing a little bit of this dynamic message that he's going to get these tips, these um, ideas, these uh, things that you need to, these, these tools that you need <laughs> in your tool bag. <laughs> To keep your take your marriage to the next level, to improve your marriage, to keep it rolling, and learn how to change change gears in your, gears in your <laughs> marriage. So you guys, um, February the eighth, Life, Lives, Love, and Relationships is going to be at the Be, be uh, the Beckplex uh, Event Center in North Augusta, right next to um, the Antique Mall. So make sure you get your tickets. You can either go online at Eventbrite.com or you can inbox me, or even pick them up at the Beckplex. So um, we'll probably go live later on with another speaker, you know, myself and Kevin Troy Johnson and Melody Manning. She's going to be also talking about dating and waiting wow. for um, a lot of the single ladies that's been, she's a widow. Okay. So 
a widow and in the, in been in the ministry. So that's a that's a whole nother dynamic yes, itself. Indeed. You know, you've been married and now you don't have a man and you want one no. and you gotta wait on one no. and try to do right and you don't always do right. <laughs> so she's gonna talk about that. And I'm gonna be talking about um damage, divorce, and um dating. So wow. So well, gonna, they're going to get a whole smorgasbord they're gonna get, this, that, this, this information is going to change yeah. people's lives. I oh, think it's going to change wow. people's lives. So um, it's going to stop a lot of these cycles yes. that people continue in in their relationships. Okay. So awesome. you guys, February the 8th, thank you for logging in. Make sure you like and share. Tell your friend, tell your, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your <laughs> uncle. Come on out February the 8th at Life, Lives, Love, and Relationships. Right. Thank you, guys. Level up. <laughs>